Hello and welcome to this edition of Take the Fear Out the Gear with me, Mr. Chumley Warner. And me, Jason Bangers, and today we've got a little surprise for you. So I've got a little project, haven't you, mate? Yeah, it's a project uh, Roland S770 sampler, sort of repair and restoration. What will follow right now is Mr. Chumley Warner attempting to put backlight in this thing so it's a nice little repair video and <laughs> watch till the end because we're going to make another announcement at the end of this here video so keep watching right here we have a roland s770 sampler it was their flagship sampler this one uh picked this one up years ago quite cheap you can see it's, it's got quite a bit of scratches on here it needs looking at this is a common thing with these these had like a this is for the record level it's like a stereo and they had like another knob which is part of it but people tend to break break them off it was broken off when i got it uh, i managed to find a silver knob because it had the knob missing as well this one if we turn it on uh, i've shone a torch at the display here and it, the display is actually working uh, but the backlight's gone so you actually can't see anything so one of the first things we're going to do is put a new backlight in so then we can see the screen we're going to see if we can, using another computer, make a system disk. Because these ones originally have got hard drives in. But unfortunately this one, the hard drive has failed. I think they originally had a 40 megabyte hard drive in. So what I've done, the first stage is taking the rack ears off, which are two screws either side. And then there's another three screws for this plate. And there's two screws at the back that hold the plate in. Looks like we've got another screw on the top here as well. So maybe I'll miss that one. Just do, let's undo that one as well. I think that's one you need to undo. I'll put that safe in there. Right, I reckon it might come off now. Here we go. Just slide. Uh, what we'll do first, forget, switch it off. There we go. Take the mains lead out. Right, this one's actually, the, the maximum amount of memory you can have is 16 meg. And these are the modules. These are like little SIM modules and it's fully loaded this one. So we've got 16 meg of memory, so that's cool. The front here, I can see one, two, three. There's probably some on the bottom as well. And what I remember from memory, because I've done this before, is you have to take the front off and possibly unclip a couple of these. I think from memory, you may have to take these boards off and just put them back slightly so you can unclip because there's a probably can't see it but down here there's a ribbon cable and that needs to come off and there's a couple of other cables sort of down on this side which go for a hole underneath this board so I think that's what you have to do from memory so what we've done is there's three screws there one two three four five six seven eight nine and then that lifts off there seems to be one, two, three, and that's the, the bottom of the uh, fascia plate. So we'll take those off and then we'll see where we're at. Right, the next stage. I think we're, we're still on the right track. This is the RAM board. What I've done is we've taken out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. This one here is slightly longer because it's got this little board on top. And then what we want to do is Gently take that off and then underneath there's these little connectors here which we'll have to take off and I think we've got one connector here and then that will give us enough slack just so we can move the front panel forward so we can get at the backlight. Right we've got the S70 turned over now on the bottom. Uh, we undid the previous connectors on the top there I showed you and it's almost out but there's this board down the bottom there which is the volume and the record level the wires come through here there's one of them which we're going to have to unplug from there and I think the other one comes to here which will unplug from there and then once those are unplugged we should be able to just carefully take the front off and then we can see if we can get to the back light. I'll just carefully unfasten this one from there and I've carefully unfastened that one from there and what I'll do, that, I think that, that one's okay this one here oh, I think we'll just this is like a little, there you go carefully take that down 
so you can just get that wire carefully carefully out right those two are free now and if you can see that we can just carefully as I move that to the left they carefully come through right well I'll take those out and then we'll turn it round and then we'll have a look at the back where the screen is right now the front panels off we might have to take off one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven screws the metal faceplate will come off and then we can get to the backlight taking those screws off uh, and you've got to gently there's these two here the little LEDs and they go in the front plate here and here just gently just gently they'll come out also don't forget to take the, the big knob cap off the front and also like the small one there as well as far as I can see we just carefully turn this over right there's the display and I'll just see how we can get the backlight out here's the front of the display it's quite easy once you get to this stage apart from I confused myself because I couldn't see the original backlight because I'd taken it out previously which confused me I probably took it out couldn't get one the right size and then left it but what you can see here there's two solder points there this is a new backlight and basically what you do is this slips behind the display like this do it like that and you can see it going across like that luckily this is the right size and then once you've slipped it enough you line up these little strips with the solder and then just do a tiny dab of solder and then your backlight is installed luckily with these backlights these come from a company in America they put a sticker on the back so you know which is the back because you've got to be careful some backlights you can't tell which is the front and the back but obviously this one there's a sticker on the back so which is handy so this would go in like this right so what I'll do is I'll get it in position then we'll get the soldering iron out right so I slid the backlight in see just here where my finger is I just put you do it very quickly just a couple of little blobs of solder there and there and then your backlight's in we'll pull the screws back in and go in reverse right so we've got all the screws in uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and just here just remember there's two little LEDs that just clip in so that comes through the front panel we'll get all these wires and we'll get the sampler and then we'll put the front panel back on all right we've got the front panel back on so now we've connected that one that one that one that one there's a little one down there and there's a little ribbon cable there we've got a couple of screws in the front panel what we'll do next is get the board that goes on top of here put that on then we'll power it up fingers crossed before we put everything back together now we've got this top board back on got all the connectors back in here and we've done the connectors underneath for those couple got the power lead in fingers crossed hopefully these back lights aren't too old and it works perfect <laughs> so yeah it's nice and clear you can see if you adjust the contrast probably about there uh, got the lid on got the bottom on screen's looking really nice and bright you can see as there's no hard drive there's the occasional flash as it's looking for the system disk from the floppy drive so what we'll do is we'll see if we can make a system disk because I can't find my one and then we'll see if we can get it all working. It's pretty handy with a screwdriver, isn't it, boy? It worked out all right, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I tell you that it was crystal clear that screen, man. Yeah. So, so what's the score with the floppy then? Yeah, what, what we're hoping to do because uh, a lot of these older keyboard samplers, etc., they've all got floppy drives in them, and they either usually fail or something happens to them. And what you can do now, you can get this thing called a floppy disk drive emulator okay and basically what it is it's the same size as a floppy drive so you slot it in take well take your old floppy drive out slot slot this in got the same connections on the back so that's all good and then instead of having a floppy disk you have like a usb stick and you just pop it in the front of the emulator oh wow the only thing is yeah. uh, people make it sound easy on youtube but i haven't found a video yet that shows you how to do it so we're going to try and work it out and then we'll bring that video to you so that will be part two 
and uh, we hope you enjoyed what Mr. Chumley Warner did there for you. Exactly. You need that. I got him. Good job. Right, so that was part one. Keep your eye out in the future for part two. So from this edition of Take the Fear Out of the Gear, it's goodbye from me, Jason Bangers. And it's goodbye from me, Mr. Chumley Warner. Check you on the other side. <laughs>